everybody. This is Pastor Pierre. Welcome to the Faith Embassy Weekend Live Stream. It is time to worship the Lord together. I'm so glad that you were able to join us this morning. Praise God. Why don't you take a moment and invite somebody to join us in this live stream? That's right. Just go ahead and invite somebody to come to church with you this morning. Share this link. Create a watch party. Invite somebody for the word of God. And we've got a special word of God today. This weekend starts our week-long Healing Power series. We've got an incredible special guest, friends to the ministry, that will be joining us today to share the word of God with us. So you want to grab your Bible and you want to grab something to write with and you want to engage with the word today. Amen. Praise God. Have I told you all that I miss you all so much? Faith Embassy family, our partners and friends, we miss you so much. And we're so grateful for the opportunities to engage one with another. I would like for you right now, just let us know that you're here. Do a quick chat check-in right down below. What that means is just say hello on the chat. Uh, and just tell somebody hello that you haven't seen for a while. And if something stands out, to you with the word of God today, whether it was said by our speakers or uh, it's revealed in your heart, I want you to put it in the chat as well that we can share in that revelation together. That's what this is all about. It's the privilege and ability to come together and engage with one another around the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's time for us to sing a song of praise to our God. Embassy Worship is going to lead us, particularly Sister Candace Yates is going to lead us in our worship service this morning. Come on, turn your devices, turn your computers, turn your TVs up. Let's sing to the Lord together. Nobody, 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 
praise the Lord. Glory be to God. I know you were dancing around your house to the glory of God, praising God with us this morning. Thank you so much, Candy, for sharing and leading in that song of worship this morning. Praise God. Well, fam, listen, we have got so much that's always going on around here at Faith Embassy. Uh, here's Lady Anaya, who's going to lead us in today's announcements. Hello, 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 Faith Embassy. How are you doing this morning? Are you excited for the word? Woo! Are you grateful God woke you up this morning? I am. God bless you. We are so happy to have you today. Now, today, I won't be giving you the announcements, but I will be having some help from a couple of my friends. Stay tuned. Praise God. Praise God, everybody. This is Deacon Alex. I'm here with Katie. We're going to talk to you guys about life group and Bible study. Praise God. I hope you're excited. We do it on every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. You either have Bible study or life group. On the first and third Tuesday, uh, Pastor Pierre usually has a Bible study on Facebook, YouTube, or Periscope. On the second Tuesday of every month, we have something with uh, it's uh, married life groups and singles. singles life groups. And that goes off Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. We also have on the fourth Tuesday of every month, it's also men's life group and women's life group. So men's life group is the great life group. Women's life group. It's the greater life group. It's also great. Praise God. So we want to make sure you guys can tune on. Again, first and third Tuesday is Bible study on Facebook, YouTube, and on uh, Periscope. Second Tuesday is married and singles on Zoom calls. And the fourth Tuesday is going to be men and women's group at on Zoom calls. At at they're all at 730. Praise God. See you guys there. Peace participate. God bless you guys. Hi, everybody. This is Minister Latina coming to you with a very special and important youth ministry announcement. We are so excited to be having our very first Youth Saturday of 2021 coming up on Saturday, January 30th. Please join us at 11 a.m. as we focus on our faith. We are so excited that our kids and our teens will be sharing their demonstrations and understanding of their faith along with a very special message coming from our very own Mr. Keith Bobo. So we are really excited. Please join us on January 30th for this very special Youth Saturday. Have a great day. God bless you. Don't forget to focus on your faith. Amen. Hi, everyone. It is awesome. We are on our seventh day of our Daniel Fast. Woo! It's going well for everyone. I know it is. I know it is. So be encouraged. We don't have what, two more weeks to go, another 14 days, but it's awesome. Just think that with coupled with prayer and us doing our 40 day prayer challenge, reading, draw the circle every day. It's a blessing. And just know that God got you and he's walking through this with us. And in the end, the results will be us closer to him hearing his voice even more so than we ever did ha i can't wait to hear the testimonies and the blessings that are coming from this all the testimonies for everybody just sticking it out just really humbling themselves and giving themselves over to god in this hallelujah hallelujah yes glory to god ha <laughs> Wow, aren't our ministers the best? Thank you guys so much for keeping us up to date with everything that's going on at Faith Embassy. Remember, if you forget any of that information and you didn't bring your calendar today, you can always go to our website, www.faithembassy.org or one of our social media pages on Facebook or Instagram to check out all the news that's going on with us. Now, without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time for the word. Let's get excited. Woo! Praise God told you there's always something going on around here. I want to encourage you guys, get connected to our life groups, get connected to our Tuesday Bible study. Stay focused on the fast and our prayer challenge and continue to draw those circles, praise God, in our daily prayer devotional. Glory be to God. It will bless your life. I promise you that. 
Well, I want to take a moment to say thank you to all of the partners and friends who have remained faithful in giving to the Faith Embassy Church. We believe that Faith Embassy is good ground and the seed that is planted into this ministry, praise God, will sprout up and affect not only our community, but the world for generations to come. The great thing about worshiping the Lord in giving is that he said when we give, he's going to give back to us. He'll have people sprout out all around us, give back to us good measure, shake, press down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto our bosom. It's a no lose scenario. When we give, praise God, we can't beat God giving. So I'm going to encourage you today, please sow a seed into this ministry. Be faithful today with your giving and believe God that every seed that is sown will return a harvest in your life in Jesus name. We have many ways to give. You can safely and securely give on our website. That's www.faithembassy.org. Hit the giving link and you can give there. Secondly, you can use the cash app. Go to dollar sign Faith Embassy Church and you can give there as well. We've got two additional apps that we love. The first is the Givelify app. You can go to Givelify, look for the Faith Embassy logo and give there or you can use the Faith Embassy app. Just go to Google Play or the App Store, download the app, and you can give there as well. Not only can you give, but you can get so much more valuable information, including our events, all of the announcements that are going on, and the archive of messages that are taught here at Faith Embassy Church. Thank God for your your faithfulness in giving. May this year present God's riches and prosperity overtake your life according to the word of God. Amen. All right, guys, it's time for us to get prepared for the word of God. Grab your Bible and grab something to write with. A couple of years ago, the Lord introduced my wife and I to, to a tag team dynamic duo they are the founders of Healing the Children's Bread International Ministries, ministers Jonathan and LaCora Taylor. God uses them as specialists, just like the medical community would use a cardiologist or a pulmonologist as a specialist for a very specific part of the body. Well, Minister Jonathan and Minister LaCora, they are specialists in the field of healing, praise God. And as we are focusing this month of January concerning the healing virtue of the Lord God, the shedding of his blood and what it means to us in our physical and mental well-being, I've invited these two to come back this year for a whole week, which we have called Healing Power. Praise God. This weekend, next weekend, and this Tuesday coming, praise God, they will be with us and we are going to break the word of God down concerning our healing and our right to divine health. So with nothing further to do, I want to reintroduce to you, Faith Embassy. You ought to be standing up in your living rooms, praise God, honking your car horns to make welcome our guests today, our dear friends in the gospel, ministers Jonathan and LaCora Taylor of Healing the Children's Bread International. Praise God. Hi, we're Ministers Jonathan and Cora Taylor, and it is an honor to be here at Faith Embassy. Uh, we just thank God for your pastors, Pastor Pierre and Ayana, and we know here at Faith Embassy that we are preparing our purpose is to be ambassadors for Christ. Amen. I'm going to let my wife tell you a little bit about our ministry, Healing the Children's Bread International. Well, first I want to say hello. I miss y'all. Just want you to know. I miss y'all. Lord Jesus, I don't want to start crying. Anyhow, so our, our mission is um, to speak life with this death, healing with this sickness, peace with this turmoil, comfort with this sorrow, hope with this despair, and truth with this deception lies. Our faith is to um, go where others won't go, to touch the untouchable, to preach to the Jesus to the lost, the set to captive free, through Christ Jesus, the anointed one in his anointing. Um, our scripture is to, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon us, for he has anointed us to preach good news to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and realize for all of us, this scripture is fulfilled this day in our ears. Amen. So, Minister Jonathan, you can take it away. Okay, praise God. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Um, this day, we're going to uh, be teaching on healing uh, with uh, the pandemic and all that uh, the news media is putting out. It's actually caused fear to the world, but it should not cause fear to us. Uh, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and a sound mind. And so uh, we're just going to be rehearsing, reminding you of what you already know. We know that you have great pastors, and they've been imparting truth into you, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So my text this morning is coming out of Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. And it says, and Moses is speaking for the Lord. He says, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For notice, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Won't you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and praise you. We thank you for the privilege to come and share here at Faith Embassy. We thank you for the angels over this house, Lord God. We thank you for Pastor Pierre and Pastor Yana, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you are doing here at Faith Embassy. Father, the time has come for your son and daughter to decrease and the Lord Jesus Christ to increase. May the people see Jesus. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Father, as always, may you be glorified and may the people be edified. Satan, we remind you of your pre-appointed place far below our feet. And Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves to hear from you what you would have us to do and say to bring glory to God. And Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves to you. You have preeminence. And Father, we do give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. In Exodus 15, chapter, verse 26, we see the children of Israel. Now, you all probably have all seen the Ten Commandments. And you know how that Moses had gone to Pharaoh and had said, let my people go. Let God's people go. And of course, God's people were released after they had gone through a number of plagues that God had allowed um, for the Egyptians to go through. And uh, they brought across the Red Sea. And we know how the Red Sea, the waters were removed and uh, then Pharaoh's army was swallowed up and the children of Israel have passed on and they've gone into a desert land. And <laughs> That's a, a clue to us that sometimes after the victory, there may be a dry land, Selah. <laughs> and so they go into that desert land and uh, they're needing of water. And they run into an area where the water is bitter. And God does a miraculous thing. He turns the water, that bitter water, into sweet by having his man Moses drop a, a wood or a tree into the water. And that's so symbolic. We know that the Old Testament is a school teacher for the new. And here we have a tree or a piece of wood dropped into the waters, and the bitter waters become sweet. Well, I don't know about you, but I do know that for me, Jesus has made my bitter days become sweet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in that 26th verse of the 15th chapter of Exodus, giving you time to turn to it and put it in your eye gates, we see that uh, God tells his man Moses, he says, look, I'm going to test the children of Israel, you know, because they've been murmuring, they've been complaining, even after I've done great exploits, they still got a whole lot of mouth, and God does not like mouth. And so uh, 
they, he says to them through Moses in that 26th verse of the 15th chapter, he says, tell them if they will diligently, diligently, not give up, but diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We know that the voice of the Lord thy God in this dispensation is the Holy Spirit. If they will diligently pay attention to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in God's sight, not my sight, but in God's sight, and will give ear to my word or my commandments and keep all my rules or my statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. This is what the King James says. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians for notice. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now we remember that I am in uh, the third chapter where uh, we re remember that Moses meets God and he says, who shall I say send them, send thee? And he says, just tell them I am. I am whatever you need me to be. He is our Jehovah. He is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. But today we're going to be talking about he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that mends, that cures, that heals. So I want to address something right here. He, the scripture says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now that is not a commissive uh, move of God. That is a permissive move. God will not allow the sickness and disease to come upon the children of Israel that he allowed to come upon the Egyptians. Remember there were plagues that happened back in Egypt and God allowed that to happen. God doesn't have sickness or disease. I'll say that again. God does not have sickness or disease. Uh, my, I think of a scripture in Ephesians, the fourth chapter in verse 27. It says, give the devil no place, give him no room. In other words, the devil often is uh, illustrated as a serpent or a snake. You know, you don't have to give a snake much room. But you don't uh, allow the enemy to come in by what you say out of your mouth or by what uh, you do. You don't allow evil to come in. You keep God and his word preeminent. And so uh, I want to plead the case, if I could, of God. In Psalms 103, 1 through 3, the scripture says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgave every one of our shortcomings or our iniquities. Now, he healed, the, what's your Bible say? Some of the diseases? No, he healed all the diseases. Glory be to God. So here we see that God is the healer. Come on back over here to the book of Exodus, Exodus 23, 24, and 25. And God is speaking and he says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods. You know, in other words, not too much TV, not too much newscasting. Okay, because we can make TV and the newscaster a god. Nor serve them, nor go after that, their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quiet break them down, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. Well, that's a good thing to know. And I will, watch this, take sickness away from the midst of thee. So God is not schizo. He wouldn't have sickness and disease and then take it, okay? Now we know that Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says Jesus took our sickness and carried our pains and Calvary. And Jesus is the, is the exact image of the Father. What we see in Jesus, we know that's the heart of the Father. So here we have two scriptures that he will heal all our diseases. Tell your neighbor that. God has healed all the diseases. I don't care about COVID-19, cancer. There is no big C. There is a big G. And his name is Jesus. Minister Jonathan, you said G. No, the name that is above every name is the name of Jesus. 
Jesus is above COVID-19. Jesus is above cancer. Jesus is above depression and oppression. Listen, I have a proposition for you. It's always God's will for his people to live life to the fullest and live long, complete, productive lives. And I said, Jonathan, what is a long life? Well, Psalms 91, 16 tells us, God saying in that 91st chapter of the Psalms, he says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Well, we know in the 90th chapter it says three score and ten. Yeah, but that was for the children of Israel that had been disobedient. That's not God's will. Let's see what God says. Go with me to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Genesis, the sixth chapter, and verse three. God is saying, he says, and God said, who said it? God said it. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be, watch this, a hundred and twenty years. Did you hear what I said? A hundred and twenty years. So that means that if you're 60, you're about middle age. That's good news, isn't it? Praise God. And this, look, this wasn't for God's select people. This wasn't for us. The book of Hebrews in the 8th chapter, verse 6 says that we have a better covenant built upon better promises ratified by the blood of Jesus. So we know that as we turn 115 or 116, you know, that uh, we can uh, lay back and, and we can say, hey, God, I'm not satisfied. I want to see my great, 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 great grandchild, you know, and when time comes for us to go to heaven, we don't allow sickness or disease to kick us out of this body. We just go on, hey, I'm going on in and take me a nap and I'm going to transfer from here to heaven, just like transferring from New York to LA. Amen. It's just a move. Not any disease or sickness kicking us out of this body. That was never God's desire. Amen. Praise God. Third John 2 says, His beloved, I pray. God is never wishing and hoping. I pray above how all things, how many things? All things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. So God wants us to have plenty of money so that the kingdom of God can be continued. We know that Deuteronomy 8.18 says that, okay? And he wants us to be healthy. He wants us to take care of ourselves, exercise, do all the things that we need to do, eat properly, so forth and so on. Because Proverbs 23.7 tells us, for as a man thinketh, so is he. So you need to renew your mind to the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, let's look at a couple of definitions. Let's look at divine. Divine is relating to or proceeding from or pertaining to God. Let me uh, just reach on over here and uh, get a little update here and I'm put on my high definitions. Amen. Relating to or pertaining to God. Amen. That's divine help. The author of uh, the information that I'm getting a lot of uh, download from was uh, Brother Hagen. And Brother Hagen said that he would go on for 30 years sometimes and wouldn't experience a headache. I'm talking about divine help. Amen. And, you know, uh, after my wife and I came into the exposure of divine help, we, before we came into the exposure of divine help, we used to have, you know, uh, aspirin and Tylenol up in the medicine cabinet. But how many know that your body is so wonderfully made that what will happen eventually, your body will just adapt or adopt 
to, uh, you know, to the Tylenol or to the aspirin. You know, first of all, maybe you'll take an aspirin for a headache, and then after a while, that won't work, and you have to get a uh, buffer, okay? And in a little while, your body will adjust to that, and that won't work, and you have to get uh, super strength, okay? But we learn in uh, divine health that God has a plan. God has his own plan for you to live victoriously. And you don't have to have a medicine cabinet full of medicine to depend on. God wants you to trust him as Jehovah Rapha. He wants to get to the root, the root cause of what's going on in your body. He, he, he built this body. Okay, and it's much like uh, an automobile, you know, it has for the automobile, uh, say a General Motors car would not have the same specs as say a, a car that maybe was built in Germany. And so you need to go to the manufacturer and find out what you need in this body. So divine is relating to, pertaining to uh, God. Health is a state of being. So if you're not walking in divine health, walk in divine healing. It's much like when uh, service is over, we're all going to leave here and we're going to go home. Minister LaCour and I will be moving a little bit south. But on the way, we might stop and get a little something, a little snack. Okay? Well, that's on the way. That's the process to going home. So if you're not walking in divine health, go through the process of walking in divine healing. Divine healing starts from the spirit of man. John 4, 24, Jesus is speaking to the woman of Samaria, and he says that God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. And then if we go to Genesis 1, 26, God says, hey, Jesus, hey, Holy Spirit, listen, we have created the heavens and the earth and we've created the animals in each one in their image. You know, we didn't put a rhino with an elephant. The rhino came from uh, his own kind. The elephant came from his own kind. But listen, this man is special. Let us make man in our image. That image in the Hebrew means representative and likeness. Likeness means model. Well, when I was five or six years old, you know, uh, my dad had a Chrysler Imperial. Now, I couldn't drive that Chrysler Imperial at the age of five or six years old, but daddy could go to a department store and go downstairs or upstairs, wherever the toys were, and he could get a model that was just like his. We are models just like our father. So God said, let us make man in our image, he will be our representative and in our likeness. So man originally was a spirit. We know that 1 Thessalonians 5.23 talks about let us have our spirit, soul, and body holy or complete. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23. So it illustrates that man is a spirit, man has a soul, and he lives in this tent called a body. See, sometimes we get it backwards. We say more attention to the body, the tent, than we do to the spirit. But we need to keep the spirit filled up with the word of God and renew our minds because the body will follow whatever those other two are doing. Okay? Praise God. Now, there's a difference between divine healing and medical healing. Medical healing is the study or practice. It's the science of medicine. We thank God for the doctors because some of us would not be around if it uh, weren't for the doctors. But medical science is a practice. It is only temporary. Medicine is any agent or substance used in the, watch this word, treatment of disease or the relief of pain. To treat is to behave or act toward. Relief is anything which decreases or lessens 
unpleasant conditions. But look, how about those TV commercials that come on and, and they talk about, you know, if you take this medicine, you know, uh, it's going to relieve you of, say, uh, you know, you've got shortness of breath. Oh, but let me tell you, we're quick about the side effects. And may even cause your death. The side effects are worse than what you were taking the medicine for. But let me tell you about God's prescription. Go with me to Proverbs, the third chapter, Proverbs 3 and 5. You know it's familiar. It says, trust, rely, lean on the Lord with how much? All of your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways. In how much of your ways? All of your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You know, your pathway to healing may be different from my pathway. Okay, here we go. Proverbs 3rd chapter and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverence the Lord and stay away from evil. It, the word of God, shall be health. That word health in the Hebrew is medicine. It shall be medicine to your navel. Your navel is your lifeline and marrow or watering to your bones. So the word of God is medicine. Uh -huh, glory to God. So when you are partaking of this word of God, you're taking your medicine. Go next door to the fourth chapter, uh, Proverbs 4 and verse 20. It says, my son, or put your name in it, Jonathan, attend. Pay attention to my words. Incline thine ears unto my saying. So we want to listen to the word of God. So we don't want to be silent in the word of God because faith comes by hearing. Let the word of God not depart from your eyes. So you want to put the word of God in your eyes and in your ears. I'm proving that. Hallelujah. Keep the word of God in the midst of your heart. So the eyes and the ears are way to your heart. Not your ticker, but your innermost being. Amen. For they are life, the word of God, unto those that find them, and health or medicine to all your flesh. So you have to open the Bible other than when you're at faith embassy. Oh yeah, a pastor can teach you something. You can get a, a, a good word, you know, from praise and worship from pastor, okay? But then you have to do something. You have to uh, open the word of God, okay? So you have to find the word of God. Health and medicine to all your flesh. So the word of God is medicine. You are taking your prescription when you partake of the word of God. Listen, I've just been giving you an opening to what we're talking about is healing is mine. Is healing yours? Come on, Minister LaCour, and enlighten us just a little bit more. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. So my piece and uh, my husband has been talking about God's will to buy help. And uh, what the Lord told me to talk about is the greater one lives in me. So I want you to say, the greater one lives in me. And we know 1 John 4 and 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when you look at verses 1 to 3, it talks about those who don't proclaim Jesus Christ is, is from the spirit of Antichrist, but those who claim that Jesus Christ is of the Lord. And when you look in, um, look at the world today, because of what's going on, the coronavirus, the you know, um, racial injustice, all the issues, marriage, divorce, all kind of things are happening in our nation and around the world, we're getting bad news. And so what God wants you to know that the greater one lives in you and that you don't have to succumb to, to, to the statistics that the world is giving. And so when I looked up the statistics concerning coronavirus, it says that 21,374,524 uh, people have been, have been affected, um, have overcome 
coronavirus here in the U.S. And we have, and that's 97 percent. You had, unfortunately, 362,764 um, that have died. Any death is unnecessary. Any death is not acceptable. Our loved ones are dying. But we, we said that 12,741,530 have overcome. And so, you know, years ago when I was diagnosed, diagnosed with a polyp in my colon, and um, by the time um, I went into the doctors and, you know, submitted to listening to what they had to say, um, they had told me that I was in third stage cancer and without having diagnosed me, just look at the size of the what it looks like. And I says, no, um, no, I don't have cancer. And so they sent me to an oncologist and the oncologist, when I made the appointment, they said, well, what stage are you? And I said, well, I don't have it. And they said, well, we don't, the doctor doesn't see um, you a person without cancer. I said, well, you have to take that up with my doctor because they have not diagnosed me. And so when I went into the seated oncologist, he was giving me all the statistics. He said 80% of the people that have what you have is third stage cancer, and it's 20% that don't. I said, well, I'm a part of the 20%. And he, you know, he was going on and on. I shared radiation. They hadn't even diagnosed me yet. They hadn't taken a, um, a biopsy or anything. This is the words that he's giving me. And I says, no, I can't get cancer. I had not always been able, bold enough to say that, but at that point in my life, I said, I can't get cancer. He says, you know, well, I'm going to do the biopsy. I said, so, um, I won't. he says, well, if you don't come back, I said, what happens if I don't have you? He said, you won't come back. He said, send me a postcard, Christmas postcard. So guess what I did? I sent him a postcard. Because, see, I was not going to accept the statistics of what he said, because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You may resist COVID-19. You may resist even cancer, anything else, but realize you don't have to succumb to the, to, to the statistics that man comes with. You need to realize who lives on inside of us. And I know that I have to constantly remind myself of who lives on inside of me. And I want you to know that the greater one lives on inside of you. And that's who you need to look to. You don't need to, yes, we may, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So um, I, every year, um, I, I, I pray and I say, okay, Lord, I, I, I want us to confess some scriptures of my family. And so I confess some um, scriptures of a, with us being witnesses in the world. Father God, our growth, um, do it, miracles, signs and wonders following, us ministering God's word, um, flowing in gifts of the spirit, being obedient, and also receiving, giving and receiving. And so as I was just reading through the word, I came across Jeremiah, the third, 33rd chapter, and actually I honed in on four and five. And you see, when I read the Old Testament, I read it in light of my covenant. I don't read it based on what it's saying, but a lot of times I read or based on what the word is saying to me, what God's covenant is to me. And so when I read, I'm going to read um, that scripture. Um, it, no, that's, that's not, okay. I'm going to read that scripture and I'm going to break it down how I interpret it. So Jeremiah 33, 4 through 5, and of course the first part of it, 33, talks about that um, crying to me and I will show you great and mighty things. But verses 4 and 5, it says, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. He's talking to the people of Israel, and they have been disobedient, so he's giving Jeremiah what's going to happen. He says, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. You have torn down the houses of the city, and even the king's palace to get materials to strengthen the walls against the siege ramps and swords of the enemy. This is the way I interpret it. You wear masks and you social distance. You eat the foods and take supplements that strengthen your immune system to keep your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, healthy, to resist COVID-19, to resist cancer, to resist any other sickness and disease. Verse 5 says, you expect to fight the Babylonians, but the men of this city are already as good as dead. For I have determined to destroy them in my terrible anger. I have abandoned them because of all their wickedness. 
I paraphrase that. I say, you are fighting, or as we say, we are, we are resisting COVID-19 and every other sickness, disease, bad marriages. Whatever your situation is, you have to realize that the word of God resists those things and you can overcome them. And so um, you are fighting or resisting COVID-19 and other deadly diseases, but COVID-19 and every other disease or bad situation is as good as dead because I have already translated you out of the kingdom of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of my dear son. God has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness. You are now in the kingdom of his dear son, called Colossians 1 and 13. And so you have to see where you are. You have to know who lives on inside of you. So that when you read, especially the Old Testament, you've seen things that are negative. And read it according to what God's promises are to you. That's what I do. I don't, even when I write notes, um, when I'm listening to the men, men and women of God, and they will say something, I will, when I write it down, I pretend what's going to happen to me. You know, they may end up saying, you know, well, um, these, uh, somebody's not tithing, and therefore the windows of heaven aren't open to them. And I'll say, I tithe. So the windows of heaven are open to me. So when I write down words, I write what I want to hear. I want to write what I want to go into my heart. I write down what, because I'm, I'm the one who's reading these notes. And so I'm going to encourage myself by what I say. And so when you look at Psalm 91, he says that uh, we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He says we shall rest in him. No harm will befall you. No disaster will come near you. And you may have been attacked by coronavirus. But you know, God says he will. He says that no weapon in Psalm, um, Isaiah 54, 17 says no weapon formed against you so proper. Things may form against you. You may ha have had bad situations, bad relationships. What's going on? But know that no weapon formed against you will prosper if you are going to trust in the one who lives on inside of you. You're going to trust in the greater one. The greater one lives you. You know, one day God told me, he says, like, go outside and look. I made the heavens and the earth. And I have to realize, you have to realize that the greater one lives in you. The one who made the heavens and the earth is residing on inside of you. What can overcome the God that lives in you? Nothing. But you have to realize he's there. You have to rely on him that lives in you. You know, all of us, he says that um, don't let the sin that easily beset you. All of us have something that we have to put our faith to in our lives. And one of the areas that uh, I can look back 30 years ago, 45 years ago, and I'll say, you know, I need to hear the voice of God. And so I remember one year, uh, I think it was last year, and I says, Lord, you know, I've been struggling with this. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I messed up so many times because I didn't recognize your voice. You'll give me the truth. You'll tell me what to do. And I reason in my own self and don't do it. So I don't receive the benefits of your voice. And then I just gave up. I said, look, Holy Spirit, you're going to have to just do it. You know, I, I'm trying. I'm meditating. I'm hearing the word. I'm doing this and that. And when I gave up, that was the best time because I wasn't relying on myself. I can't even realize I need to totally rely on the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me for everything that I need, even to hear his voice. I need to rely on him to help me to do that and not my only my own efforts. And so you have to realize that the greater one, he who made the heavens and earth, is living on the side of you. And I thought about how even if you're not attacked with sickness, disease, you're navigating through something. I thought, thought about Peter and how the whole the angels came and he was bound up. He was he was in jail, but yet the angel came and loosed him from that. And so when I think about that, there's situations in your life that maybe you even caused. Maybe you just decided to go do your own thing. Maybe you have a, a wayward spouse. Maybe you have don't have a loving relationship. Maybe you have bad relationships. Maybe you're dealing with sicknesses. Maybe you're dealing with COVID-19. Realize that the Holy Spirit living on inside of you will navigate you through that. Just like the angel took got Peter, led him out of the jail, God will lead you out. I remember many, many, many years ago, my husband and I were between a heart and a rock, uh, a rock and a hard place. And, um, you know, I know there was one more step to my relationship with God, but I didn't want to make it because, frankly, I thought he was going to send me to Africa. And I had heard so many negative things about Africa. I didn't want to go. And we were in that place. And I surrendered. I said, God, I, I just surrendered. 
I just surrendered. And he said nothing to me about Africa. And I'm like, I could have been this a long time ago if you weren't going to say nothing. And then, <laughs> God is funny because he called us to go to Africa. And it's wonderful. Wonderful. But I, what God wanted me was to surrender my life. He wanted me to get past God being just my savior. He wanted to get me past God just being my master. He wanted me to exchange my life for his. And that's the same thing that God wants you to do. He wants you to exchange your life for his. And that the greater one lives inside of you that you're totally trusted in him. Yes, you may wear your mask. Yes, you may social do. Yes, you eat right and put the nutrients in you to, so you build up your immune system to resist sickness and disease. But your reliance is on the greater one in you. And so um, that same God will navigate you through. You know, I think about if you deal dealing with bad marriage and, and one thing about reading the word, God's talking to you. He is talking to you. I know what I'll say this. When I read the word, he ain't talking to me about my husband. He's talking to me about me and how I, how can I, if they're bad relationships, how can I, what is my part in it? I'm a wife. I want God to love me as Christ loves you. What is my part? God, what do I need to do? Have respect for him, to honor him. There's always something on my part. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you eat of the good of the land. There's conditions to his promises. Yes, there are facts that I had to do nothing to get. And one of them was healing. Inside of me is healing. He's already healed me. I'm not trying to get healed. But I want, and inside of me is everything I need for life and godliness. But if I want to partake of that, I have to partake of his, my knowledge of him. And so my next scripture just talks about 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4. That by his divine power, he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through our knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to uh, read that out of the uh, Passion. Translation. Hallelujah. It says, everything we need could ever, that with everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Verse 4 says, As a result, he has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price, so that through the power of these tremendous promises, you can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that, of, that are of the world. This is everything that you need to live in a God in life, that you need to, to overcome this world, already lives on the side of you. Why? Because God lives there. What more could you have? What more can you go get than the fact that God lives on the side of you? You're relying on him for everything that you need in this life. You have to... Uh, I'm talking about it. And so it says that we can... How do we get these precious promises? By knowing him. I want to encourage you. Get into the word. Know what God has for you. So that when you hear statistics in the, in the, on the radio or your next door neighbor, your co-worker is telling you what is according to the facts of this world, you can say, no, that's not my father. No, that's not of my father. No, that's not how my father treats me. No, God has been good to me. He has put in me help. He has put in me himself. He has put in me... What did God leave in heaven? Nothing. He didn't come to live on side of you and left healing in heaven. He didn't come to live on side of you and left bad marriages. No. He, he's given you everything you need. But as I talked about you, you you're going to have to rely on him to talk to you. How do I change? How do I navigate? How do I depend on you, Lord? What is my part in partaking of who you are? And so it's so important that we know him. 
extremely important so that when you hear that which the Antichrist is speaking, you says, no, I am part of the three percent, I am part of the 97 percent that has survived, overcome coronavirus. No, I'm a part of the I will live. Yes, I will do my part, but I'm not relying on those things that the government is requiring me to do. I'm relying on the one who lives inside of me because if those things fail, I got insurance. My reliance is on the greater one that lives in me. And so you're coming to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. You're realizing that you are safe in God. You're realizing that you're healed in God. You're realizing that you can have great relationships. You're realizing that no, I lost my job. No, my job is not, my career is not doing well. But God, you are my God. You are the one who's taking care of me. My reliance is on you. And you have to constantly, you may get annuity every month, you may get uh, may money and investments, you may get, uh, there might be different, um, what they call them, um, streams of income. But frankly, God causes the streams of income. See, it goes back to God, period. It goes back to the greater one that lives in you. Say, the greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in me. And so you're relying on him. And he wants you to rely on the God that lives on the side of you. And I, I'll start a little bit this today. And, you know, God has put inside of us his faith. They have the faith of God. Do you realize that, yes, faith comes by hearing? But when he came inside of you, his faith came. And it has become your faith because he gave it to you to use it. And so I have to remind myself, I'm using God's faith. I'm just using God's faith. God, I, my trust is in you. You split the Red Sea. You caused Peter to come out. God, you turned relationships of Paul and who was it? Um, Cyrus had a big, somebody had a big outing. But God had to mend that. God had to mend that. We have to rely on God for everything. Believe God. We cannot do anything in this life without having faith in God. Have faith in God. The God that lives on the side of you. The greater one that lives on the side of you. Use his faith to navigate through this time. To overcome this time. The there are people that have died. There are people that are suffering. There are people that lost their jobs. This year for me, and I, and I write it, I'm going to have a year of gratefulness. I'm, I'm working or not complaining about anything. Instead of complaining, praise God for keeping me. Praise God that in the midst of what's going on, you, I'm still alive here. And you know what? It would be bad if I go because I know where I'm going. But I, I want to finish my race. So I want you to rely on the greater one that lives on inside of you. So I want you to say, I am of God and have overcome the world in all of its statistics. Because greater is he who lives in me than he that lives in the world. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you so much, ministers Jonathan and LaCora, for the word of God today. And we are just getting started. Hallelujah. I know that your faith has been edified today from the word of God, which was shared with us today. Yes, Father is going to satisfy us with long life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. Listen, 
If you are tuned in today and you have not made the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that he is available to you today. I believe he's here waiting on you, calling for you. Praise God. Do you know that the Bible says in Romans, the 10th chapter and verse number nine, that if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That means that you don't have to try to get yourself together. You don't have to clean yourself up, praise God. You can come to God just as you are. Hallelujah. So I want to extend an invitation to you to come to Jesus. Let's start this year off right. Let's start this year with our life in his hands. That's the safest place it can possibly be. If you sense that I'm speaking to you, I believe that the Lord, the Spirit of God is pulling upon your heart right now. And I want to pray with you. The rest of us, let's just bow our heads and join our faith for those that we're praying for. If you know that you need to receive Jesus Christ and you sense him pulling on you, or you want to return your heart back to God and rededicate your life back to him, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, forgive me of my sin. I confess Jesus as my Lord, and I believe you raised him from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and help me, empower me to follow you and be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, if you said those words, if you prayed that prayer, I believe that all of heaven is rejoicing with you right now. I want to personally hear from you. I want you to send me an email at pastorpierre at faithembassy.org, praise God. Or you can type in the chat, say, I believe. Type it right now in the chat. We've got ministers online right now that are going to reach out and connect with you. We want to get your contact information because we want to send you some resources that will help you on your journey. Glory be to God. Congratulations. Hallelujah. We rejoice with you. Amen. Well, that's it, family, from Faith Embassy here today. I want to remind you that we are praying every day, every morning at 6.30 a.m. and every evening at 8 o'clock p.m. Just dial in on the prayer line. And then you want to join us this Tuesday because Minister Jonathan and LaCora, my wife and I, we are going to be in a panel discussion. We will be live and sharing and breaking down the word of God and having intimate organic conversation around the word of God concerning healing and what's going on in our culture today. So mark your calendars for this Tuesday and join us then. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you again on behalf of my beautiful wife, Pastor Yan, and our family here. We celebrate you and love you with the love of the Lord. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Me avergüenzo del Evangelio